Right, Gwen, you're going to do the first item? Yeah. Uh, so, the City Council consolidated this election at Wichita County on March 3rd. And um, the clerk has issued the certified canvas of election results. Uh, and those were included in the staff report for the City Council members' review. Um, at this time, we will uh, administer the oaths of office for the two council members that we have seated. Uh, we will reorganize the council and seat a new mayor and mayor pro tem. Um, and at that time, I think, unless Jessica wants to address it uh, beforehand, uh, we'll turn it over to her to um, address the issue of council member Wilson, a uh, former council member Wilson who has, uh, will not be assuming the seat and then how to address that vacancy. So do you want to go ahead and administer, have me administer the oaths, or do you want to turn it over to you first? Let's do the oaths and then. Okay. Yeah, let's do the oaths and then I can explain. All right. Um, and the other order of business that we have on the agenda would be service recognition for Brian Wilson and Joseph Franco. Um, I'd like to put that off to a future meeting, either one of them are here. So. Very good, thank you. Uh, Mayor Stafford, I will call you up first. All right. Sure you don't need both of us? No, it sounds like work from Star Trek when I do both of them at the same time. So I'm going to give you this if you will raise your right hand and repeat after me. Um, I state your name. I, Kevin Stafford. Do solemnly swear that I will support and defend. I do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California. Of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely. And that I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties upon which I am about to enter. And that I will well and faithfully discharge my duties upon which I am about to enter. I normally would shake your hand and say congratulations. <laughs> exactly. But you want me to sign this for you? Yeah, if you would sign that I one. to invite uh, Quincy McCourt to come up. Try not to style just for the fun of it. I wanted to go with like rainbow, duh. So you have to raise your right hand please and repeat after me. And you can read along if you'd like. I, state your name. I, Quincy McCourt. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend. This reminds me of Boy Scouts, I'm just saying, I that know. I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States. To the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution to the State of California. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully. And that I will well and faithfully. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Upon which I am about to enter. Upon which I am about to enter. Okay. Congratulations. Air hug. Sweet. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So now, fun. if you want to sign this, sign them. Do you have your own pen? Mm -hmm. And I have a, a uh, block for you if you want to take your seat. Yeah. And that one's yours to keep. 
This is for my dad in the back. So as everyone probably knows, I'm Jessica Ryan Keeney, the city attorney, and that's really for their benefit. And council member Wilson has elected not to take the oath, file as bond, basically fill his seat. So there are a couple things that need to happen because that creates a vacancy. And the vacancy is pursuant to government code 1770I. And so what needs to happen is, is first the council needs to declare their a vacancy and then the city clerk needs to post notice of the vacancy and needs to notify the county elections official. And then there are a few ways that the vacancy can be filled. So either the vacancy can be filled by council right now or council can uh, solicit interest for people to fill the vacancy like we did the last time we had a vacancy and then conduct interviews and review applications and fill the vacancy or the council can call a special election the special election option requires a bunch of other steps and it would cost us more money because we'd have to call a special election I recommended the second option the last time we had a vacancy and that was solicit interest do interviews appoint a council member that way I I don't really like number three because it'll take a little bit longer we have to pass an ordinance it'll cost more money and whatever council decides to do council needs to basically order staff to do what we're told to do and then our city clerk Gwenna can do a minute order and send that over to the county elections official and let the county elections official know how we're going to fill the vacancy that's any questions no okay i'll sit down and await direction what's your guys preference so I mean, since we just had basically an election could we just take the next highest vote getter in that since we just basically went through the whole process anyways you can yes so you would have to declare a vacancy first that has to happen no matter what because there is a vacancy and then the notice of vacancy uh, would be posted and you could just fill the position with the next highest vote getter and i forgot to mention that the period of time that the appointee I'm assuming that's the direction that council's going to head appointee not special election uh, the period of time the appointee would serve would basically be until the next general election so the next elections in uh, what november and then they need to run for council and then there would be another election so it'll be a short term short-term appointment no matter how we slice it yeah That's unless you have a special election and then you could then you're talking 20 grand mm -hmm. so it'd be a two-year stand so two years for 20 grand or free for November yeah so that would make sense. it would just change the cycle was all it would do Quincy. the next cycle would be three instead of two and then it's, it's all it does so, and, and actually, I'm sorry, uh, Gwena was reminding me, the next part is, is that whoever gets elected in November then only serves out the, uh, basically, the period of time that Council Member Wilson would have served out. So if the Council appoints, uh, appoints someone, they'll fill the seat until they have to run to keep the seat in November, and then whoever's elected in will only fill the seat as long as Council Member Wilson would have filled the seat. 
basically the same term minus June to November. So basically, if we do what Brian suggested in November, that person would have to run again. And if we do a special election in November, that would, person would have to run again. Or no, if a special election were called now, then we'd have to pass an ordinance, and we'd have to call a special election, and we'd have to set the special election, and we'd have to go through all of the special election steps prior to November. So the added cost would be that we would be holding an election separate and apart from an election that's already set in November. Is there a cost-free way that lets somebody stay in there for two years or so? No. So either way, somebody has to rerun in November. There's a cost and then there's not a cost. Right. Right. So whatever is easiest that doesn't cost anything is kind of what I'm going for. I like what Brian said. I think we should follow our guidelines and do what we did before. I mean, we, we did it once for many. We should just follow that guideline and we can have it done in 15 days, like you said. So. What's the what's the time? Is that the same thing that Brian's suggesting? Uh, no, sounds that's, sounds that's like different. That's, he doesn't want to do interviews or anything or put it out, but but you need to say consistent within government or you're all over the board. Are all options legal? Yes, I strongly encourage you guys to take option three. The special election. Yeah. yeah so option three costs money. That seems no good. Option one or two don't cost any money. One way we've done in the past, but it takes 15 days or so. The other way we get to move into it relatively simple and follow maybe what I hear you saying is the voters made a decision sort of thing, take whoever's next in line, kind of expedite that process. Yeah, my question was that we just if, if we can do that. I just, just to make, otherwise I'm totally for that. That seems straightforward. And I definitely appreciate what you say, but it seems straightforward and doable. What do you think, Mindy? I'm thinking. <laughs> I agree with Mayor Stafford that we should follow our guidelines. I also agree that Thomas was the next one voted in, and it was just recently, and he received quite a few votes. So I'm on the fence right now. Um, opening up for interviews would take how long? approximately 15 days you said so council gets to give us some direction we recommend soliciting votes for a reasonable period of time and 15 days is reasonable especially because in another section of the code for another type of board it specifically calls for 15 days so basically under the interview scenario i recommend soliciting applications for 15 days, I'd recommend setting the meeting to do the interviews tonight so that everybody knows exactly what time all of this is going to happen. And then if the council were to choose that option, I'd recommend appointing the new council member at the same meeting that they will be interviewed. On one hand, the result may be the same. If we interview and have the next meeting, then uh, at that point, uh, I guess it would be up to us if, if all of a sudden we saw something different in a potential new candidate than the voters saw. Uh, we don't know, I guess, until we interview, but it sounds like whoever we appoint will happen at the same time based on what Jessica just said. So. Uh, with respect to making things easy and more on the free and now option and all that kind of stuff, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely okay with just moving forward with what the voters already chose because yeah, it was like 36 vote difference between uh, Thomas and me, and we were behind Kevin. And the voters kind of made that decision already for us, and that would just be that would be easy. I'm all for easy, uh, and it seems somewhat consistent too because if we were like in many situations, someone were to step out, drop out, 
uh, then we're following our consistent platform like, like uh, Mayor Stafford suggested. That didn't really happen. Both get the same outcome. I'm on board for, for both, just not up to the bridge. I think the citizens have spoken. So I'm going to move over to that, uh, just appointing directly. Thomas, he, he's, his votes were way ahead of the next person. I think the citizens have spoken. That's the direction I'm going to go with. There you have it. You got your direction. Okay. But all I'm going to say is don't ask me to come back and do the right things now because we're not following policy. So remember that. I was actually going to suggest that we table this. And I'm going to go call Margaret. She deals with this way more than I do. Uh, we anticipated option two. So we're prepared with paperwork for option two simply because that's how we've done it in the, in the past. Uh, so I'll... Wait, will the council please table this so I can... I'll move to table. Thank you. And, oh, or... We... Still? We can bring yes. it back after closed session. Okay. Yes, I'd still ask council to table it until after closed session. Mindy, Mindy made Mr. a motion to second round. Second, yeah. All in favor? Thank you. I'll be back. We'll be here. <laughs> then I suggest we table number E too. That until we figure it out. Do you guys have any problem with table number E until we figure it out? No, it's fine. I'm fine. Okay. Alrighty then. Is there any public comment out there before we go into closed session? All right. Seeing so, you know, we're going to go into closed session now. All right. We'll come back from closed session now. Anything to report, Mike? Uh, correction given to staff. All right. Hey, we'll come back to, uh, uh, what is it, one, one D and E once Jessica gets the information back. So we'll go on and return open session. Can we stand for Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Any changes to the agenda, Mr. Wilson? Uh, not at this time. Uh, Council Person Schuster. Yes, and I'm ready to. All right. Okay, thought of the day. Alone, we can do so little. Together, we can do so much. Helen Keller. Thank you. We're going to do the proclamation to the next meeting for Brian and Joe. Very good. Business from the floor. Members of the public may address the council concerning any items on the agenda prior to or during consideration of that item. However, any matter on the re requires action will be referred to staff for report and action at a subsequent meeting. Presentation is limited to five minutes. Anybody like to speak? Okay, consent calendar. All matters listed on the consent calendar are considered to be routine by the city council. There will be no separate discussion on these items. Any member of the public or the city council may request removal of an item from the consent calendar to be considered separately. Okay, we're just looking for a motion. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Let me catch up. Oh, 
Okay. Did you get an answer, Jessica? I did. All right. We can go back to item 1D. Thank you. I spoke with outside counsel and we, it's no problem. We don't have to accept applications. However, we do have to post the notice of vacancy for a reasonable period of time and it'll state that we're not accepting applications. So she's drafted the notice of vacancy. She recommends 15 days. Uh, we can still proceed as, as we want to and our reasoning is valid and the applic or the uh, oh and the appointee needs to submit an application so that we have it uh, you know on file dot the i's cross the t's and then the applicant can be appointed at uh, a regularly scheduled meeting so i was looking at the calendar that would be april 15th so we uh, should not appoint the person today we need to do that notice of vacancy and accept an application. You got that, Thomas? Okay. Is that good with the rest of council? Yes. Thank you very much for trailing and letting me oh, you're right. verify you. that. Okay, so 1E. Nominations for mayor and mayor pro tem. Unless you want to wait for the 15th to see the fifth person. Either way, fine. No, I don't care. What do you think, Quincy? Whether we nominate now or wait till the 15th? Okay. Yeah, where we have the fifth I love person. Suspense. Let's, 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 let's do that. Do what? Let's do the 15th. Added suspense. Okay. Well, that way Thomas would have to say so. Yeah, no, I'm joking. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys are all right with it. That's, that's fine. fine. Okay. Go ahead, Jessica. I... But my gut tells me that we should appoint a mayor tonight. Otherwise, we're going to be without a mayor and a mayor pro tem. Uh, the other appointments uh, to the boards, I see no hurry in making those appointments tonight. But we also need a vote and an order on how to proceed with the notice of vacancy. So on the notice of vacancy, how do you want the motion worded? Uh, basically, I, a motion for the council to declare a vacancy based on government code 1770I and then direct the city clerk to prepare a notice of vacancy, post the notice of vacancy for 15 days, put in the notice that council will not be doing interviews um, and that the appointee will be appointed on April the 15th and, and something else in my, in my mind. Oh, and that the city clerk will notify the county elections office of the vacancy by minute order. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, then we're looking for nominations for mayor then. I'll nominate Wendy. Anybody else? Alright. All those in favor of Mindy for a mayor? Aye. 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 Second, it's like you said. Good, 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 you good, good, second, so. Oh, you can't? Oh, yeah, second, sure. All right. Then, motion for Mayor Pro Tem. Jessica, can I? Or no? Am I out now? Can you? Uh, can I make a motion for the Mayor Pro Tem? Yep. Why not? I nominate Brian. More. 
seeing you in a second to come from me again. Say, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, sounds good. That's okay, all good. those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And then it's your meeting, Mindy. As of right now, or? Yep. Next? Yes. <laughs> You're it. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem says we're on 9A. Okay. 9A new business. Uh, we're going to consider the approval of vendor warrants number 206137 through 206196. That's it. David. The motion to accept the file. We have a motion. I do have a question. Am I, am I asking you a question on this? Uh, is there any way we can do this without like 20,000 sheets of paper? Are you asking me? Or I don't know. Or staff. Mm -hmm. every, every council meeting this comes up and we have many sheets of paper that seem somewhat superfluous and ultimately we don't really read every item on there and we then accept it. Seems wasteful. Do the chair may answer? Yes. At this, at this point, it's so the public can have access to view the documents. If you wish for us not to provide copies to each council member, we can. We need to create it for our agenda and our, our public document. Posting online makes perfect sense. I personally don't need a copy. I might download the one online like I did on here and maybe read it. But otherwise. I do read it, though. I go through every one of them. Yeah, well, through it I haven't read them. Um, that will, could though. be because this is the first one. But, will, but either way, I definitely don't need it in paper. Can are you talking about this item in particular or the agenda package? Well, ultimately, the agenda would be cool if we could digitize that, but I'm specifically talking about the agenda. Agenda okay. oh, uh, Sorry, Council Member McCord. Here's what happens. Um, sometimes my father's business is used and I have to abstain. Sometimes he has a family member whose business is used. Do you have any concerns about any company being used that you would have to abstain from because that's how that's when it comes into play for me and then I keep all the sheets that say Jackson's um, so I don't vote on my dad's business or something I guess if there was a way for staff to creatively come up with a way so we didn't have to print so many sheets of paper I'm open to whatever that may be and I agree with you on that. I suppose staff could tell us if we had a family member or who we had used. I don't know how to do that. Oh, yes. Council can elect to take their agenda digitally. I elected to take mine digitally. I realize I'm not a council member, but I did that when I first got here. So that's something that people can elect. We ought to do. We already digitize it and it's searchable by law and on the website, but we do actually have to mail out complete agenda packets to the people who request it and make them available to the public by law. Please read the whole agenda. Okay. I want the whole agenda, so. I'm going to do whatever. Is there any further discussion on this at this time? Are we ready to vote? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Yes. I have a motion and a second. I apologize. That? I made the motion. Okay. We have a second by McCord. Okay, thank you. 9B, consider resolution 205753, approving cooperative agreement for federal Access Personal Property Program, Chief Jones. Or, I'm sorry, Chief mm -hmm. Moore. I'll get it. <laughs> yeah. Is this Moore? Yeah. Yes, Madam Mayor and members of the I don't like looking at the side of your face. Mm -hmm. Madam Mayor and members of the council. Yes, uh, this item. Uh, with uh, through Cal Fire uh, Forestry and Fire Protection, we've already approved a cooperative agreement years back in uh, 2013, <clears throat> and this is a five-year agreement. What this this program simply allows us to operate and get uh, 
excess equipment through the fed fed excess program f e p p federal excess personal property program we use cal fires our screener so if we see things on the on the program we want to get our hands on we currently have a generator up at uh the on curac subdivision that came from that program we have we have some equipment that we've gotten so this is simply a um and uh and a, we need to re, re-sign that agreement. It's on a five-year life cycle. Uh, so I'm asking for a motion to approve resolution 205753, authorizing the fire chief to sign cooperative agreement with Cal Fire for the loan of federal excess personal property program. Does the council have any questions for Chief Lawyer? Comments? I'm looking for a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Are you just going to stay where you are for the next one? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So 9C and D are combined. We have resolution number 20-5758 supporting declaration of local emergency in the city of Susanville relative to the novel coronavirus COVID-19. And resolution number 20-5759, authorizing the enforcement of all health laws within the city of Susanville by the Lassen County Public Health Officer. Yes, Madam Mayor and members of the council, this item, um, on March 20th, last week of 2020, Lassen County did declare a local health emergency regarding the COVID-19 um, novel coronavirus, which um is ratified through the city council through the approval of resolution 25758 um the hns code section 101375 provides authorization for the county health officer to enforce those health laws within the city of susanville uh, this requires a written agreement or city authorization by resolution or ordinance uh, which is provided by the way of the next resolution 205759 what what we're asking tonight is to approve resolution 205758 supporting uh actually declaring a local or supporting the declaration of the local emergency in the city of susanville relative to the novel coronavirus covid 19 and resolution 205759 authorizing the enforcement of all health laws within the city of Susanville by the Lassen County Public Health Officer. Council, have any questions? No, I'm looking for a motion. A motion to approve resolutions 205758 and 205759. Uh, Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. How about a question for legal on that um, I believe by our code the mayor has to declare the emergency and then be approved how does that look in this meeting I mean we provided the documentation but I believe by our code the mayor actually has to declare the emergency with respect to um, resolution 205758 the mayor can declare that by signature fantastic we're good She's okay. also make the statement right now I declare that uh, as the resolution 20-5758. Thank you. On to 12A, it's a direction item, a uh, discussion regarding community garden, Heidi Whitlock. Is, are you? Heidi. Heidi. Uh, good evening or good afternoon. Um, the City of Susanville on February 20th, 2019 entered into an agreement with the Lassen Aurora Network. Um, most of you may know the Lassen Aurora Network is no longer active. Um, and that agreement was for the use of the community garden or actually to carry insurance, I guess, for the community garden. Um, now that the network is no longer active in order to have the garden, it looks like we need to have another agency that will hold uh, the insurance for that. Um, we have had 
a few conversations with um, our attorney um, who said that uh, one of the options that we had in place um, or were considering was not an option. Um, so I guess the, the main point is we have an individual in the community or probably a group of people in the community that want to see the community garden continue and they were curious if they were to start a nonprofit of their own um, to carry that, um, that insurance. What the council's opinion was, I guess, of the garden, if it was going to continue, if you wanted it to continue because they didn't want to bear the cost of starting a, a uh, nonprofit agency, if we were going to close it. Um, so that's pretty much what the what the gist of this this item is. Uh, Mr. McCourt may be able to provide a little bit more information, but um, but ultimately it was a member from the public just wanting to know what our interest was or what the council's interest was in keeping that garden going uh, before they they started that process. Okay, thank you, mm -hmm. uh, Madam Mayor. Do you have uh, I guess a request or something to say about that? About this, this so you probably can't hear me. Is that right? Is that what the hand signal meant? Can, can you hear me now? Yeah. And even with this guy. Okay, so community garden. I'm just curious if staff can determine if there is a free and now option that requires very minimal, so close to zero effort that allows the community garden to take place with the volunteers that have done an outstanding job over the past two years and doesn't and it doesn't make any, doesn't expose us to any additional risk. It, and so I did some research on that, spoke with Mike on that, and it seems like uh, community garden needs to continue, but we don't need to have too much staff time towards it. And it actually seems like with the volunteers and all the effort that they've put into it, they can continue to do that, and we can almost uh, step back and allow that to continue as long as we make sure that there's no additional risk. And Mike mentioned per specific volunteers, we would need to make sure our insurance covers them for I think workman's comp. Uh, if that's all it is to let, let the community members who are already managing that on their own anyway, I would love to see no effort from staff and to see the community garden continue. I think it's great as long as there's no liability to the city. I don't have any issue with it. Um, obviously, they failed to meet their their obligations last year. They never reported back to council on anything, you know, which would have been nice to hear actually how they did. But you know, hopefully this year will be better. But as long as it's really no cost to the city, I don't I don't have any issue with it. And with with respect to that, this would be. Because I, I agree, it would be nice to have quarterly reports where the community garden came to us and said, this is our yield, this is how many people were here. Part of that could be the problem that the, uh, the nonprofit that we signed an MOU into was basically dissolving as they were also trying to allow that to happen. And so then it you know, did dissolve, and now we're here where we, where we are. But I, I, bet, I think... Uh, don't think it would be too much to ask specifically Seth to come back and just tell us how, how it's, I think he'd love to do that. He likes talking in front of I agree. I agree. Okay. Do you have direction, do you think? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Let's move on to 12B. Discussion regarding the homeless, and that is Mr. Wilson. Okay. As this is a continuing item, uh, we most of us are focused uh, heavily on on the coronavirus issue, and we want to ensure our public that the homeless discussion is ongoing and continuous. There are groups, uh, a unified group between the county and city, who are continuing to discuss the options, uh, long term and short term uh, goals and objectives for the for the homeless, and we will continue to uh, maintain this on our agenda uh, for future meetings. Yeah, Chief would like to add to that. And, and so after uh, the last council meeting, I did reach out to Ms. Longmore Redding, um, and rather, uh, it was actually the day uh, right before the meeting, there was all kinds of snow, so uh, rather than have her come over here, uh, I 
put down a bundle of questions, questions that have been asked by the council in the past, along with, can you please explain uh, how you feel that we are okay with the policing decision? Because I know that's obviously a bone of contention with the county. So she's working on that. I'm, I'm confident she'll have it for the next meeting. Okay. Council, anything? Yeah, I'll I, I do think, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, to add to your list of questions, or maybe staff already knows, with respect to not a final solution to our homeless situation, but for a free and now option that allows uh, people a place to stay, it would be awesome if, if our officers or any enforcement was able to say, you can go on one of the properties that we discussed in the past, uh, not forever, but in the meantime, I think it would be it would be good if we could afford water, blue rooms, all that kind of stuff, just so that we can say we can actually not necessarily for Boise, but it's a free and now option, not totally free because outhouses cost money, but it's very low cost, and at least we can say, hey, please don't camp on our river. We're working to figure out something. It may be two years to four years until if we ever get a shelter, but for now, we have an alternative to sleeping on the river and. It will get dirty there, but it's getting dirty at the river, and at least we can allocate something something different. Uh, can I respond? Yeah, hopefully. It says uh, discussion. So, yeah. So, well, um, I, I, I get where you're going. The problem is the only area we, or at least by council's direction at the last meeting, the only area would be that area up on Spring Ridge. And, you know, there, people can't camp there right now. It's too rocky. I mean, and we spoke about that that there would need to be improvements if that was going to be a designated location. Uh, the only location, truly, um, and we haven't identified all of them yet, but the only location truly would be on the corner of the Skyline 139. I think the council's pretty clear that they didn't want to see that. And everyone can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I, I think that, you know, we're, we're going to get those answers, and I'll be, I, I believe I will be able to bring those answers next Wednesday. Uh, but at the risk of not telling someone Hey, you can go here. You know, um, it has not been that big of an issue over the last couple of weeks. Right. Um, people have called. We've had a couple of calls. Each time we get called, we go down there and say, "Hey, pack up your stuff." We haven't seen any resistance. So the good news is that you know people are reporting it. But uh, I would, I guess, what I'm saying, uh, Councilman, is that I would recommend to hold off until we get some more firm answers from Prentice and Long. And like I said, I think that will be by the next council. Awesome, thank you. Would, would it be okay to request that at the next council meeting with the answers you have, we all show, also make it available for all of us to, to discuss it? I think that's what it's a discussion. Okay, good. They're just curious. I'm still learning what you're allowed to say and what you're not allowed to say. And mostly it sounds like we listen. You can't say too much, but I just want to make I love, I like the word discussion. Thank you. Anybody else? No? Okay, let's move on to 13A, and this is an update on the coronavirus, and this is Chief Moore, or Chief, Chief Jones. I'd like, to, I'd like to open on that if I could. Okay, Mayor. yes. Um, so I, I just want to inform our public uh, that our, our public safety folks, our first responders, are, are actively involved in, in this ever-changing event on a, on a daily basis. The, the directions that have been given uh, at federal level, at state level, and, and at local level now, um, create a, quite a, a whirlwind approach. Our, our, our cities in a unified command with the county um, as part of their operation through a uh, disaster that's occurred, which is a public health disaster. And I, I want to take a moment to recognize our first responders who are out there and really in harm's way in dealing with this. They're the ones who are out making the the contact with individuals on a daily basis, not really knowing what they're facing. So I just want to take a, an opportunity to thank them and applaud them. For the, for the <laughs> Continuing on as meetings continue to happen on a daily basis uh, and our, our unified command uh, involvement in both law and fire, um, I, I wanted to have both of our chiefs speak on this. So Chief Jones, if you could open. Yeah. Um, I don't know if, if everyone read the press release we did through the Joint Information Center, but essentially we uh, we have a nice hard lock in our lobby. You know, it's thick glass. We talk through a microphone, so we haven't shut our lobby now. Uh, we are limiting people in our lobby to one person at a time. 
Uh, we have went to some reduced or alternative uh, responses to certain non-violent, non-in-progress calls. So instead of getting face-to-face -face with an officer, they're getting a phone call. And, and frankly, we haven't been doing a whole lot of that because uh, most of our calls that are requiring our people to show up. Um, this is a scary one for us because, you know, if I have a sergeant and two people working on a shift and one person gets exposed, all three of them are off for 14 days. So uh, we're crossing our fingers. Uh, like Mr. Wilson said, we have all our protective gear. Uh, our people have been um, well trained in, you know, two, two different times. I, I held a squad meeting twice in, in a matter of uh, seven days. So our people are very cognizant. We have had um, at least a couple hands-on events since this started. And, um, you know, our, our people are going to do their best to, to stay protected. Um, one of the issues, and I, I'm, I would be shocked if all of you have not heard this, but one of the issues we're facing is we have businesses that are open that are, you know, quote, non-essential businesses. Most, <laughs> the most popular would be the TNA. So they refuse to uh, abide by the executive order. Um, one, of the, one of the issues there is that the governor's put out uh, three, three or four, definitely. And he gets up to the podium and he talks a big act about how, you know, you shall, you shall, you shall. And when in those executive orders, there's no, no language in there. So I will say this, that in my um, speaking to Ms. Long, she told me that if we chose to, we can enforce it under the governor's order of that business not being one of the 16 uh, essential businesses. Um, slippery slope, because if we were to do it to one, we would have to do it to all that are you know, considered non-essential. So, because, I, like uh, Councilman Stafford said, consistency. So, you know, we can't just go, and, and it's, not a, it's not an issue of shutting them down. What would happen is we would go there and say, if you don't sit down, we're gonna write you a citation. Uh, then the next day, you know, write them another, write them another. So, uh, odds are people would shut down. So, that's still something we're juggling with. We had a little bit of conversation about this morning. Um, it's, it's, frankly, it's offending. You know, I mean, I'm not a social media bug, but last night there was a, uh, someone started a stream of, um, you know, how come the TNA is still open? And I think at last count this morning, there was over 160 replies. So, in, in probably in a 90-10 against me. So, it's kind of, you know, people are coming in asking. I have been hit up by, uh, you know, folks at the casino, a couple of them. And they're wanting to know, well, can we, can we open back up? And I say, I, I don't have an answer for you. So, uh, it's, it's really frustrating. Um, ABC has received at least 15 calls from members of the community. Um, so we're, we're dealing with them. And again, it's not just about them. Uh, the racquetball club is still open. Uh, there's a couple other businesses that are open. And again, I mean, it's so tough because we don't want to kill our, our economy. So either way, we're still really thinking about it. And uh, if we choose to do that, then you know, I'll make sure the council is well informed. I'm not, you know, again, I don't want you to take that as, we'll get an email tomorrow, Kevin says we're gonna do this. But if it comes to a point that, you know, it, it's just like, and, and I'll, uh, James will agree with me, I'm sure. Every, you know, from nine days ago, every day something new has come out of either the governor's office, the health department, or what have you, and it's every day. So this might escalate to a point to where we have to, I hope it doesn't, uh, but, you know, as we all know, when and if we get a confirmed case, we will, that will also alter the way we do business. So, you know, um, we're doing our best and it's really tough, really tough. Um, and so that, that's really all I have there. James uh, is, is a lot more well informed regarding the health, the public health side, so I would defer to him for, to finish that up. Yes, um, thank you. So. On the, on the public health side, we the, the health department, um, as you may or may not know, it's it's currently the county's health department's emergency. It's a health emergency, the COVID portion. The reason we declared an emergency is we're impacted financially, and after all this, we can get some reimbursement. That's really the only reason currently until it affects us at a deeper level. But with respect to the COVID discussion, and that health emergency, um, the health department ramped up. They were starting to follow their plan 
for uh, for the incident. Um, we the accounting off uh, OES off various silos and robots um, started a remote emergency operations center at the college. The college has been more than helpful with all of this, um, offering up staff and, and, and uh, real estate for us to operate in. But uh, we, we did, came to the discussion, to the conclusion last night that if it continues to grow or grows, the current plan will not probably work. So this morning, we, uh, with CAL FIRE's help and uh, our help as, as, at the city, we partnered with the health department and, uh, and the sheriff's office. We put them in a unified command and we implemented the ICS system, which they were not working under the ICS system. They were working under NEMS and SEMS, which is a oxymoron of the ICS system, if you will. And that's a nice way for the fire chief to put it. Um, it's, so as we went through today, we have reorganized the um, COVID-19 incident command team. We just left meetings when we came here. We have everybody in place. Uh, it's probably a probably a 60 member team now, total, uh, in total staff. And uh, we're just getting them spun up tomorrow morning. We'll do a meeting uh, to set some objectives from the ICs, which is Barbara Longo, County Health, and Sheriff Dean Grout. Um, they set their objectives and goals, and the team makes that happen. So that's where we're at now, um, preparing for the worst, although we hope it doesn't occur as we spoke. Um, we are asking for the public to be prudent and help us, and that, that's a struggle for us. It's, um, there's good information out there. We're trying to get better information out. One of our, one of the, uh, the guidance today was hoping for at least one a day updates out of the, the JIC, the Joint Infrared Information Center, no matter from the team, oh, maybe twice a day. So people are getting good information. Um, a few topics that you need to know is it's, uh, that there's two things that concern us, and the, the health department can, can answer this better, but I, I know enough to be dangerous. It's transferred when it's asymptomatic, meaning you can share it without knowing you have it. That's what causes it. That's why we don't like the bar open. We don't like the health club open. Because, well, I feel fine. I can go work out. Well, you're asymptomatic, and you might have it. And in 14 days, 30 people thank you. Um, the second, the second <coughs> issue is this virus has a high rate of uh, a higher rate of mortality than we're used to, but a high rate of uh, hospitalization. I think it's about 18 percent, whereas the flu that kills a lot of people only requires about 1.8 percent. I think is what I read. This virus has the off uh, the ability to overcome our health system, in tr uh, tremendously overcome our health system in, in minutes, in days. That's why it worries us. So those are two of the points that, that we, we were frankly terrified of. Uh, we don't have the beds for the folks. Are you, so, are you at all considering taking over the college dorm? I know it's empty, they have a lot of beds, everyone has a bathroom. That hasn't been spoken about now. What what you could the, the first move that you would see happen because people can quarantine in their homes if they're sent home to self quarantine. The first thing you would see happen with respect to that question is you will see a facility open up with medical beds, and they will clear the hospital out of the patients that just are there to have care. So the hospital is now available with all 30 beds or whatever they have all for COVID victims. That would be the first thing you would see happen. Okay. And that's why the governor wanted the ship in Long Beach to clear out the hospitals, not putting COVID patients on the ship, to get hospital beds in all the inner city hospitals, put those patients on the ship with the hip replacements and the heart issues. 
so they have hospital beds and doctors for COVID patients. That's how that looks. That, that's a little inside. But right now, we haven't discussed a quarantine or isolation for the public. No, we have not. Council have any questions? Madam Mayor, may I? It's not really a question. May I add to this? Is that, is that okay? Well, so thank you. So first of all, I also hope that law enforcement does not have to enforce shutting down in any of these businesses. It would be great if we all understood the situation and made those decisions on our own. Secondly, I think it's amazing that our first responders are prepared for the worst in high hopes that it doesn't get there. I ran into Chief Moore the other day at the Ace Hardware and we both agreed that the sky was not falling. But at the same time, I was not able to discern with the news available to me what the actual risk or the actual situation was. So I did some research basically with information provided on the World Health Organization the amount of people infected on the daily that's reported up until, it's usually got about an 18 hour lag. Uh, and then just used a simple y equals mx plus b to find the exponential curve, the slope, the m, and plug that in to the very beginning and it brings you right up to where we are today. It's, all it is is following the accuracy. So there's a couple things and I prepared them to write, write that down. Uh, I took into consideration the human efforts to flatten the curve of the spread. I compared the data available on the flu from the CDC. The CDC estimates that potentially up to 60,000, up to 60,000 deaths happened in the last six months. If the COVID-19 spread rate does not change, and again, all of these efforts make an impact so that we do change the spread, flatten the curve, however you want to refer to it, but if it does not change, the coronavirus death count will surpass the flu on or before May 3rd. And that's only using math and the data that's available. That's not using anybody's expert opinion. Secondly, if that still seems insignificant, one week later, the COVID-19 death count will double that on the flu. Now, I personally, maybe I don't have to worry about getting sick, but understanding the value of what our chief just said, it'd be great if we could get the other people on board to some extent to understand the hospitalization rate. If that doesn't, even so, if that doesn't wake people up, uh, the following week potentially will. And if our habits do drastically change, the good news is that we can manage the situation. Again, just using math by people not spreading it and slowing down the spread. So what sort of, what sort of impact might we want to see before people don't need to be told what to do so that our chief doesn't actually have to tell certain businesses to shut down. Maybe if that death count equaled that of the flu, which using the projections now on the conservative scale would be May 3rd, and what if we waited until that death count doubled, which would be about May 10th. That may allow some people to take this a little bit more seriously. Still, I don't think we need to panic, and I still don't think it's the end of the world, but if you do want to prepare for the worst, if nothing changes using the same rate, now things are already changing. This conversation, everybody else's impact is already changing. But if nothing does change, just using the acceleration that we've already seen, the entire United States will be impacted by June 15th and the rest of the world shortly after, which becomes very difficult to manage. I think, I think it's very, very, very manageable, and I think we have a team here that is prepared for it. It's not something we definitely need to panic, but I do think it is slightly more serious than the word on the street for some people. So, Councilmember McCourt, with that said, do you think that it is wise for us to meet without live streaming for the next meeting? Uh, It's, it's, or, one of the, it's, it's one of those things where still, do I even believe it? If I'm just looking at the math, yeah, I think it would be one of those things where it would be great if everybody just decided to stop the spread. Because the cool part is, in 28 to like 37 uh, days, if you imagine you went into your own house and you just didn't do anything, and say you were infected, well, 
takes 14 days or 2 to 14 days, then you get infected, and then say your body fights it off for 14 days, and then you still have interference that may be somewhat contagious, so you stay in your own residence for another 14 days. If we did that, we could kill it basically worldwide. So every effort that we make to flatten the curve will be better for overall because otherwise we're waiting for 500,000 Americans to die before we actually say, is that the number that's scary enough for us to take some of these precautions a little bit more seriously? Still, not the end of the world, nothing to panic about. It's just the reality of math. So virtual meetings, not meeting at all, redefining potentially what is really essential, but hopefully empowering the people to make those decisions themselves because nobody wants to shut somebody down, but at the same time, nobody wants to be a vector. But I don't see this as the end of the world, just an opportunity for all of us to work together separately. I just wondered with what Chief Jones said about a local establishment staying open, if we're being a good example ourselves by coming together. I mean, I don't know. I, mean, I don't know the answer. I don't even know what it would take for us to get, it, get our meeting out on YouTube or Facebook or I know we can't use Zoom, right? We've Actually, we've got some very simple things that I've researched that are in part of our economic development implementation plan. There's some software out there. Some of it's free, but it doesn't open it up to the audience too much. Some of it costs money, but it's not that much. Facebook also uh, is pretty easy. We actually used our, our, our insurance money to purchase a camera that is designed to stream to Facebook. So that would be something we could do. We could stream every from this day forward. We could stream every single meeting. There's also software out there that allows you uh, to text in your, your thoughts. So for example, if the mayor said, hey, what, what do you think about X? And the people in the audience could text into a certain number and in real time on our bar chart, up on our projector or whatever, or on the screen for people watching, we can see the audience. And it would be another way to engage the community. There, are, there is technology available to us which will allow us to communicate better and that potentially could be one of the problems that all governments of the world are having right now because there's so many people that don't know if this is real or don't know if it's not real, whether we should trust the government or whether we should trust the cases, or if it's really as easy as saying it's a simple cold, the flu is worse than this, it's not that big of a deal. But then understanding things, what Chief Moore said with 18% hospitalization and 2 to 3.4% death rate and all that kind of stuff, those are things that we can consider and we do have technology. And we already purchased the hardware, the video camera, the tripod, the the recording device, it's at City Hall just waiting for staff to to implement it. It also records every meeting onto a onto a disc if we want to record anything for future. Yes. yes. Unfortunately the law doesn't allow for a, a purely virtual meeting. Uh, I have to look into the legality of letting people text in their questions because that would be awesome if we could do that. And I, I see no problem coming up with an answer, uh, you know, fairly quick. I, I won't have one before this meeting is over. But the law doesn't allow all of us as council members and department heads and legal counsel to sit at home and say Skype into a meeting. We have to be in an open forum to have our meeting and we have to leave it open to the public. Uh, but we can live stream our meetings so that people who want to know what's going on but don't necessarily have anything that they need to say, they just want to see it, they can watch it. And that's where the uh, software that Council Member of the Court mentioned would come in handy. Okay, thank you. Can I ask a question? Yes. Um, are, there are retention requirements for that, correct? Um, so that, that video would have to be maintained for, X, for X amount of days. The good news is what we've already purchased saves that on a disk, and then we can upload it to our server or, or you know, give it to our web manager or whatever we do. Would the council be interested in hearing back from Jessica? Um, or do you want to visit this or not? I don't know. Like, I don't know what it entails. I, I would like to request, if council's on board, direction of staff to just begin at least immediately, immediately meeting the next meeting, 
start live streaming. We can still meet where we feel comfortable and safe, but we can we can make our meetings available. Being that we already own the hardware and we have the software, and there will be a little bit of training involved, but 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 not much. And I'd even be happy to volunteer to set it up at every meeting. Okay. At least until staff can take over. Sounds good. Through the chair, my, my only concerns are we weren't using our own facility, we're using the county facility. We do have a few challenges with that. We don't have microphones that work tonight. Getting into a little higher level of technology, yeah. working with the county may be, may be a little more challenging than, than we know. I think, again, for the long term and, and creating a solution in our own building with our own servers and our own systems, we should be able to do that as we continue to have to use an alternative location for space requirements, we may be a bit more challenged. That's a good point. Um, we can also live stream off our, off our phones, though, if we if we just wanted to make it available. Like, I think Jeremy did that at the meeting we had here. Somebody did. Okay. Because I know somebody watched it in India. But now that you suggested too is that uh, so if you decide to that you do want video. You you're not too worried about the texting the interview and that part. Uh, it would probably be much easier for you to do it asynchronously, uh, which is what we're, we're kind of here today. Uh, it, it'll all upload this entire meeting on YouTube uh, later tomorrow morning. So maybe that that lifts your burden a bit if, if you can just video the meeting and upload it to YouTube the following day or something like that. That makes your, your job a little easier. Then worrying about streaming is inherently Difficult, uh, just because you're dealing with all these different technical problems. Uh, when you're uploading to Facebook, Quincy knows this. Is, you, you run into different difficulties when you're trying to do it synchronously rather than if you do it asynchronously. Download it from the camera, upload it when you feel like it. You know, have them do the next day. That may be an easier solution than worrying about streaming because streaming is, is much more difficult than just shooting a video and uploading. That's that's. Right. Thank you. So it's something for us to think about and discuss. Um, we'll hear back from Jessica, I think, and see. But right now, right now, um, Mr. Wilson's correct. We we're meeting here, so Jeremy's idea probably works for the next meeting. Yeah, anything that allows more community members to be engaged, I think, is. Yeah. Good. Okay. Step in the right direction. Okay, are there any council items? I'm moving on to item 13. A. Okay. Um, first, I, I missed the last meeting, so I had to get an opportunity to thank Dan Newton for his time here. I think 12 years with the city and 20 years within the county all together. That did a great job. <coughs> and welcome on Mr. Gibbs, is our acting director. <coughs> I also wanted to thank Dale Moore for the uh, tour of the gas system that I went on a few weeks ago with him. It was very informative. And all the, and all the folks out there at the uh, CCC that allowed me to go through their, their facility out there is pretty impressive. So, thank you. Anyone else? Council items? Yes. I do. Thank you. If, if I may. Uh, so I, have, I just have two council items, and they're, they're quite quick. So uh, I'll, just, I'll just read it. So in an effort for council to prioritize direction to the city, I request before next regularly scheduled meeting that staff provide a very basic list of every single project they are working on. It may be as advanced as the city administrator directs, but as simple as name, title, and every last project they are involved with. For example, every single project the building official is working on. So uh, I further request uh, an agendized discussion on the reality of our staffing capacity so the council uh, may inform staff of priorities uh, to take place moving forward. And part of the deal is there is a disconnect between probably what, be between council and staff, between certain staff members and certain staff members, and between the general community and staff. And it's in order for us to operate like a well-oiled machine, I think we have to be able to define the parameters of which we have to work within. I am aware, just because of being staff, that there are plenty of people with wearing too many hats that though they may not be going insane, they're unable to accomplish 100% maximum potential. And 
I think uh, I would request direction to staff uh, for staff to prioritize writing down every single thing they are involved with so that we can be aware. If, for example, if all of a sudden I have a new idea and I think this new idea is going to save the city, but I'm unaware that Anthony and, and Heidi already have 10 different things on their plate and they're only able to contribute 10% to each one of those, but I now want the two of them to tag team a new task force. If I know what they're able to accomplish, I may not throw my new idea out there. And so in an effort for the for staff who is smart and hardworking to better perform, I would like for us to have, uh, just for every staff member, to write down every single thing they're working on so that we can be aware of what you guys are doing so that there can be a real connection between council and staff, city and staff, and interdepartmentally staff and staff. Council Member McCourt, with all due respect, we cannot give staff direction. It's a violation of the Brown Act. You can request our city administrator to do that. We cannot. So I, in, in, thank you. With respect, I did speak uh, with, with Margaret Long uh, a few hours ago just to confirm and so what, what she suggested, I also read the Brown Act, both the actual Brown Act and the, and the cheat sheet. Uh, what we actually can do is request direction to staff, and council is allowed to basically not necessarily discuss that item, but say uh, either I agree or I disagree. And, and, then, and then we can request that. But we can't request it through the city administrator? Yeah, it yeah. always should always probably go through the city administrator, but we can present that request at, at any time. for staff to come up with that before the actual meeting and just provide it to everybody online the night before? Like, so, so we often provide other information. You have to have it presented. Um, so the agenda has to be posted 72 hours prior to the meeting. So in order for that information to be made available for the public and for everybody within that time, we just don't, we don't have time for next De Definitely agreed. I'm all, I am also aware that plenty of times we've put additional information to be pro provided at, at council. Me, myself, it might take me, let's say, an hour if I were to write down every project I was involved with. And that priority, I think, gives us the tools so that we can empower our staff to do the best they can. Maybe we don't provide that information by Friday, like you're saying, but maybe we do have an insert that says, uh, just a, when it comes to operating our city as efficiently as possible, it seems like we may as well start immediately. And that's, that's part, partly what I, what I was hoping to do. That said, um, I'm okay with, uh, with whatever. I, I would request, based on the fact that we've just declared a local emergency, that we focus our efforts currently on the top priority, which will be our local emergency. I'll be happy to have staff do that as time goes by. But I think right now, I'm taking staff out of their current mission So is staff currently focusing on focusing every all staff focusing on COVID nineteen? A good portion. Of it. So that seems like a priority that would be worthwhile to put our efforts into. There's sounds like another portion that might not be. But uh, anyway, that's the request. So we can we can bring that back. Uh, we have to have the tools we need. At least council, we need to understand the reality of what staff's trying to accomplish. So. Um, okay, thank you. I had a couple items. I, I wanted to thank our staff um, for, uh, uh, Mayor Stafford and I oh, were called into a meeting and um, the everybody was, was respecting the sheltering in place and the, the staff had to come in and I just admired them so much for for working through this and caring about our citizens in the middle of all this and not only our first responders but the people at City Hall as well. You guys are doing an excellent job and 
I wanted to thank you for getting that state of emergency declaration. I, I'm not sure who did it, but right on the front page of our web of our web page, right on the you know the first page. I really appreciated that, so I wanted to let you guys know that. Thank you, Mr. Puso. I appreciate that. So anyway, is there anything else? I didn't mean to cut you off. By no worries. Way. I do. I do have one more. So okay. It'd be, and this could also come after the the COVID nineteen or when staff has time. Uh, because I do agree that, that should be a priority. Um, we might be able to consult Daniel Gibbs or a number of among staff, but I'd like to be able to move the majority of staff report agenda items to consent calendar and save some of the other time for discussions like, uh, you know, high priority things, for example, like COVID-19, homelessness, and public trust. The only, the only thing I could see happening if we did that is there are a lot of times when they give a staff report that I have questions. We're still able to ask questions on those. It just expedites some of the no-brainers. Sometimes there are things that we do put forth a lot of effort to write a staff report and do put forth a lot of effort to explain it, and sometimes everybody definitely agrees on that time. Part of the deal is, you know, council, we may be a riveting bunch, but it seems very, very, very boring one of the ways that we can maybe make it more more fun and entertaining is to to have discussions that people may want to be a part of, part discussions where they may want to be involved with, and a lot of these things we can we can kind of you know expedite because the four of us probably have a lot to say and this, the community might have a lot to say, and some of those that we don't have questions it would allow us to just kind of speed speed that process up and take away some of the effort that staff puts into. There's a lot of effort that goes into an agenda, a lot of effort that goes into a staff report, a lot of effort that goes into all the different things that we ask of staff. And to minimize that, empowers our staff to accomplish more. And it still gives us council members the opportunity to ask as many questions as we want, because we should be able to. And if we're curious, there may be other members in the public who are curious. And sometimes those are the things we want to share. But often we find that a, a lot of what we do is, is for formality that legally it seems like we do have some ways ways around it. And so worth, worth exploring, but the overall goal is allowing our staff to actually accomplish more with the little time that they do have and having a kind of prioritizing, which I agree, uh, COVID-19 to me does seem like a priority that the city should be focusing on staff, all members of staff in every department on every level, even this, However we look at it, it's going to change our society, so making that a priority for the city is, is good. And I especially like everything you bring to the table, Mike, just because of all the fun ex experience you've got with your reports and your management of all that, and the same with, with both of our chiefs. So it's, it's, a, it's a learning opportunity. But I hear you. Um, I, I think that the staff uh, reports become important at certain times even for the public. I think all of this belong all of this information goes to through the city administrator. That's just how I was trained. Um, I I um, I don't know how the city administrator feels about taking away the staff reports. That might be important to him. Uh, so however you guys want to revisit it, if you want it to be on the agenda or whatever you want to do with that. Madam Mayor, can I suggest yeah. as we get through this uh, COVID-19 issue, maybe it would be great for our council to host a workshop uh, to, to talk about setting priorities, and that would be probably the opportunity to make some decisions on how we wish to proceed. Thank you. That's a great idea. Agreed. Thank you. Does anybody else have any council items? So our next meeting is scheduled for April 1st. It'll be held here, is that correct? Okay, so I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. So Second. Second. Thank you so much.